Hi, my name's Kirsty Ross and I'm a history curator here at TMAG and I was the person who, I guess, put together this exhibition called West Out on the Edge. But I um, had a lot of help from other experts and other curators. Um, but essentially the exhibition uh, looks at uh, four main themes and really explores what makes this part of Tasmania really unique and special. One of the things that makes the West really unique is its environment and its weather. And of course the West as we know it is a really wet place. It bears the brunt of all those weather systems coming across the ocean that pick up water and then drop all of that rain as soon as it hits the coast. So in this part of the exhibition, we've got a rain gauge that shows us how wet the West is. And in fact, the wettest place in Tasmania is Lake Margaret, where the annual rainfall is three and a half metres per year. One of the really unique things about the western part of Tasmania um, is about its remoteness, but also about the communities that have lived there despite um, its remoteness. And one of the themes in the exhibition explores the idea of community and people living there. And this really allowed us to bring out some of our key objects, our iconic objects from TMAG's collections. Some of these are related to the, uh, the, the convict station that was in Macquarie Harbour on Sarah Island in the 1820s. Uh, convicts who re-offended were sent out to the west to live at this penal station because it was so remote from anywhere else. And TMAG has some amazing collections related to the convict station, including some of the bricks that the convicts made themselves, um, which have been autographed and bear the, the thumbprints and other marks of, of those poor souls. We also have a really iconic object related to Lady Jane Franklin, uh, the wife of a, an early uh, official, Crown official out here um, from Britain. Um, she was a really intrepid woman and when her husband decided he was going to go on an overland uh, trek out to the west, Lady Jane decided she was going to go out there too, but because she was um, a lady, um, she wasn't really expected to walk, and uh, so she was um, given a chair that convicts uh, carried for her. It's also called a palanquin. Uh, two convicts carried her. She was a lady, and so it was unladylike to really be um, roughing it by walking through the very dense bush and forest and across the rivers of the west, western part of Tasmania. But according to her diaries, Lady Jane Franklin did actually get off her chair and offered it to a maid accompanying her on the journey. Another really iconic thing we have in our collection is a box of the gravel from the Queenstown footy oval. Now sports was really important for creating communities and bringing people together in the West and um, the gravel from the Queenstown Oval is really iconic too um, of the kind of really um, tenacious spirit of communities in the West. This is some of the gravel from the Queenstown uh, football oval. Um, I'd really hate to um, be tackled and skin my knee on that. It's in a first aid box from the Lyle Football Club, one of the many football clubs that was set up um, in the West um, to, um, for competition. The things that attracted um, people to the West and led to the formation of communities 
uh, was the, the wealth of natural resources there. And so a lot of people travelled west in the late 19th century um, to work there. And the work there has been around mining and the mineral wealth in the west, uh, but it's also been around uh, some of the hydroelectricity potential of the region as well. Of course, the region is incredibly wet, there's uh, incredibly reliable rainfall there, and there's a lot of it. Uh, there are mountains there that are really useful for creating um, elevation for hydro dams. And so at TMAG, we've got this amazing pipe made from king billy pine, a tree that grows in the west, um, part of the rainforests there. And this pipeline uh, was made as part of one of the really early hydroelectricity schemes in Tasmania. And it was 2.2 kilometres long and it carried water from Lake Margaret around a mountain to the top of the penstocks that fed the power station at Lake Margaret. And Lake Margaret actually generated power to smelt copper that was mined around the Queenstown area. And using electricity to smelt that copper was a much cleaner way of processing that raw material. The electricity generated was also used um, to power up Queenstown. And this happened in the 1910s and 1920s. So the West was a, a, one of the earliest places to have this electrical industry happening. West Out on the Edge explores how that part of Tasmania has inspired art um, and lots of different kinds of art. And one of those art forms is, is photography and a really important photographer who travelled out to the west and to the southwest was a man called Olegis Tricanus. And he went out there, took photographs, and used his photographs to really promote this amazing wilderness in Tasmania that by the 1960s and 70s and 80s um, was under threat um, from the industrialization of Tasmania. And we have some really, these two really iconic objects on display in West. One is this amazing kayak, yellow and blue kayak, that Olegis Tricanis and Peter Dombrovskis, another photographer and environmental campaigner, that they made. And you could just see in the photo in the background there a little tiny lozenge of the kayak at the bottom of an amazing precipitous um, gorge. And behind me here, we've got a tent that Olegis uh, used when he was going on these amazing expeditions out into this wilderness or out into these places of amazing um, natural beauty. The West has inspired many artists and many art forms. And one of my favourite artistic responses to the West is Marie Bjorke-Peterson's book, Jeweled Nights, and the film of the same name. The film was made in the 1920s, and it was filmed in black and white, and of course it was a silent movie. And it starred Tasmania's very own Louise Lovely, who had been a Hollywood star in the 1910s, she came back to Australia intent on creating a film industry here in Australia. And the first film she wanted to produce and direct and star in was Jeweled Nights. And that was set 
um, on the west coast or in the west of Tasmania on the Osmeridium diggings. And Louise played the main character who was a cross-dressing Osmeridium digger looking for that elusive mineral. Um, she was Elaine Fleetwood fleeing an unhappy romance in Melbourne. She came down to Tasmania dressed in men's clothing, pair of breeches that we have here on display too, um, transformed herself into Dick Fleetwood, um, determined to uh, find wealth. In fact, what she did find was true love and a husband. Um, you might be able to find a copy of the book online or in your library. It's called Jeweled Nights by Marie Bielke Pedersen. There's also a little bit of the original film still, still available, a couple of minute, minutes. Um, it's a romance of the West in the true sense of the word.